Good morning. Today we will start with introduction and basic concepts. The topic which we will discuss is the state postulate. As noted earlier, the state of system is described by its properties like pressure, temperature, volume. But we know from experience that we do not need to specify all properties in order to fix this state. Means uh, we need not to specify pressure, temperature, volume, density, all the properties. We can define the state of system with a few parameters. Once a sufficient number of properties are specified, the rest of properties assume certain values automatically. Like we know pressure PV is equal to MRT. So if we know pressure and volume of the gas, temperature will be automatically fixed. That is specifying a certain number of properties is sufficient to fix a state. The number of properties required to fix the state of system is given by state postulate. Like uh, this example here. The state of nitrogen is fixed by two independent intensity properties. One is your temperature which is intensity property independent of the amount of the system. If you cut it in temperature will remain the same and specific volume. So these properties will define the state of the this nitrogen gas. A system is called a simple compressible system in the absence of electrical, magnetic, gravitational, motion and surface tension. Means we will not consider these facts here right now. Electrical, magnetic, gravitational and motion. We will treat, neglect these things. These facts are due to external forces fields and are negligible for most engineering problems. Otherwise an additional property need to be specified for each effect that is significant. If the gravitational effect are to be considered, for example, the elevation Z needs to be specified in addition to two properties. Means if we will take consider uh, the height factor that is the uh, initial condition what is the you can say position of uh, this material with respect to your sea level and uh, later on after at the final state what is the position if the fluid will have gained some height so then we have to consider this elevation z also the state postulate requires that two properties specified by independent to fix the state two properties are independent if one property can be varied while the other one is held constant Temperature and specific volume for example are always independent properties. They are independent and together they can fix the state and simple of a simple compressible system. Temperature and pressure however independent properties for single phase system but are dependent properties for multi phase system. Means uh, pressure and temperature can't define the property of system. The reason is because at sea level pressure is one atmosphere then water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. But in at mountain where pressure is lower, water boils at lower temperature. So pressure and temperature can't be used, but we can use pressure and volume to define the state of system. That is temperature is a function of pressure during a phase change process. Thus temperature and pressure are not sufficient to fix the state of his two phase system. Means uh, we have to find the state of a system and to define the state we need few parameters. Like here we need temperature and volume. But if temperature and pressure is given, so that is not sufficient to define the state of system because temperature is a function of parameter. If pressure will change, temperature will change. Next is your process and cycle. So every process, uh, every whatever happened uh, around us, internal combustion engine or take example of any cycle that is gas turbine cycle, power plant cycle. So they involve process and combination of process is called cycle. So any change that is system undergoes from one equilibrium state to another is called a process means this is your state one this is state two so if there is a change in the properties at this point here that is p1 t1 v1 it will convert to p2 v2 t2 so this change in state from one to two is called a process and the series of states through which a system passes during a process is called path so state 1 don't go directly at state 2. So it will first go here then here. So you can say a process is a combination of change in successive states from state 1 to state 2. You can divide this into infinitely small amount of you can say large number of processes with small changes. When a process proceeds in such a manner that the system remains infinitely close to equilibrium state at all times it is called quasi-static or quasi-equilibrium process. 
a quasi equilibrium process can be viewed as a sufficiently slow process that allows the system to adjust itself internally so that properties on one part of the system do not change any faster than those at other parts of the system you can take this example this is a piston cylinder arrangement we will push this piston very slowly very slow at very slow speed so uh, when they will move very slowly so this is called quasi static process or you can say the system will have quasi equilibrium process and when the piston will move very fast it is called non quasi static process so what is difference between quasi and non quasi we will discuss a quasi static process can be viewed as a sufficiently slow process that allows the system to adjust itself internally when a gas in a piston cylinder device is compressed suddenly the molecules near the face of piston here will not have enough time to escape and they will have a to pile up in a small region in front of the piston so when the piston will move very fast these molecules don't have enough time to rearrange and they will pile up and the pressure near the piston will increase large as compared to this pressure so it means within this system pressure here is high and here pressure is low it means there is a mechanical no mechanical equilibrium means mechanical equilibrium is disturbed because of this pressure difference the system can no longer be said to be in equilibrium and this mistake this makes the entire process non equasi equilibrium however if the piston moves slowly the molecules will have sufficient time to redistribute and there will be no not be a molecule pile up in front of piston as a result the pressure inside the cylinder will always be nearly uniform and will rise at the same rate at all locations since equilibrium is maintained at all times this is called quasi equilibrium process means a piston will move very slowly whatever the molecules here they will rearrange and the pressure throughout this your cylinder will remain same if pressure means same it means the mechanical equilibrium is maintained and it is called your quasi equilibrium process it should be pointed out that what quasi equilibrium process in an idealized process and not a true representation of actual process it is a ideal case in actual case there is no quasi equilibrium process but we try to make the processes near to quasi equilibrium process uh, to obtain maximum efficiency and maximum output of the system but many actual processes closely approximate it and they can be modeled as quasi equilibrium with negligible error engineers are interested in quasi equilibrium process for two reasons first they are easy to analyze second working work producing devices deliver the most work when they operate on quasi equilibrium process therefore quasi equilibrium process serves as standards to which actual processes can be compared so quasi equilibrium process is a standard process with which we compare other processes process diagrams plotted by employing thermodynamic properties as coordinates are very useful in visualizing the process you can see here we can represent a thermodynamic process in the coordinate system that is pressure on one side x uh, y coordinate volume on another side some common properties that are used as coordinates are temperature pressure and volume shows pv diagram of a compression process of gas we had discussed in other subjects also that any two properties can be represented graphically and the relation and variation between these properties can be explained with the help of graphs note that the process path indicates a series of equilibrium states through which the system passes during a process and has significance for quasi equilibrium process only for non quasi equilibrium process we are not able to characterize the entire system by a single state and thus we cannot speak of a process path for a system as a whole you can see here in this figure uh, from 1 to 10 to this uh, process uh, this is the process path of the process at one your volume is larger pressure is lower and when you go from 1 to 2 your volume will start to decrease here at two volume is less while pressure is more so there is uh, two things has changed one is pressure second is volume it has converted to p2 and v2 so a process is said to be occur when there is a change in the state of the or you can see properties of the system you can see here this is from 1 to 2 piston is has compressed your gas from 1 to 2 at one volume is larger at two is volume is less while pressure has reversed the prefix iso is often used to designate a process for which a particular property remains constant 
uh, isothermal process are those process in which temperature remains constant for example is a process during which temperature remains constant isobaric are those which during which pressure remains constant and isochoric are those during which your volume remains constant so this is a types of process and uh, a system is said to have undergone a cycle if it returns to initial state what does this mean is cycle means combination of process this is suppose one process then second process then third process and fourth process it after all the processes the system return to original state it is said to be a, a cycle now we will understand the new concept that is steady flow process what is a steady flow process first we will understand the meaning of steady and then we will understand the meaning of unsteady the term steady and uniform are used frequently in engineering and thus it is important to have a clear understanding of their meaning the term study implies no change with time it means uh, you can take example of this container here the mass will come into the container and mass will go out at 1 pm the temperature is 300 here 250 at this point 225 here and 150 at this point but after 2 hours, means after some time, means 2 hours if you at 3 pm, if you measure the temperature here, it remains same 300 degrees Celsius. Here it remains 225, here remain it remains 150. Means still something is flowing through this uh, control volume, but the temperature at uh, the locations is same as the previous temperature at same locations. So the term study implies no change with time. Means with the change in time from 1 pm to 3 pm, the positions temperature at uh, these positions remains same. The opposite of steady is unsteady or transient. Means if uh, with the change in time, if temperature will change 300 to you can say here it will change, so it is called unsteady. So these meanings are constructed with their everyday use. A large number of engineering devices operate uh, for a long time period of time under same conditions and they are classified as study flow so most of the engineer you can say devices uh, they will work under study flow conditions we will take an example of a refrigerator when your refrigerator is started the condensing temperature and you can say the temperature of the fluid or gas within the different devices is low after running of 30 to 40 minutes the temperature of the condenser and uh, will reach a constant value say 75 degrees Celsius and outside environment temperature is post 30 degrees Celsius so at that point your uh, refrigeration system has reached a steady state conditions but when you start your refrigerator the compressor will compress the gases and uh, temperature in condenser is as the room temperature which will is suppose uh, 30 degree so condenser will have 30 degree suddenly gradually it will start to rise and it will reach a state where its temperature no longer change so that is called steady state most of the time the engineering equipment operate in steady state processes involving such devices can be represented reasonably well by a somewhat idealized process called steady flow process which can be defined as a process during which a fluid flows through a control volume steadily as in this example that is the fluid properties can change from point to point means property will change from here to here to point to point within control volume but at any fixed point they remain the same means this point at this point the property remains same during the entire process therefore the control volume and the mass and the total energy content E of control volume remains constant during steady flow process Turbines pumps, boilers, condensers and heat exchangers or power plants or refrigeration system are example of steady flow uh, conditions or cycling devices such as the reciprocal engine or compressor do not satisfy any of the conditions stated above since the flow is in inlet and exit will be pulsating and not steady. However, the fluid properties vary time in, in a period manner, periodic manner and the flow through these devices can also be analyzed as study flow process uh, and we are using time average values for these properties so this is up to here about the uh, processes and uh, your cycles like this video subscribe my channel
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो और कमेंट यू कैन गिव इन द ब्लो सेक्शन